Welcome back to Orgzu Instant Insights series, where we talk about lifestyle learning in culture, behavior, and leadership. Today, I wanted to talk to you about your personal journey of becoming adaptable. And by personal, I mean both in your personal life and in your professional life. Becoming adaptable is the way in which we can cope with the unpredictability of the world, but it means bringing all of our capabilities together, leadership and change and understanding of risk, our knowledge, our capabilities across knowing, doing and being into action to improve our performance. Adaptability is key to all of this. If we apply mind flex, we can move how we think about things from what is to what is possible. And this enables us to take our potential and move it into value. But to do this effectively, we need to open our minds and to feel confident in volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous situations. Your subconscious will try to advise you or to make decisions to keep you inside your comfort zone. Becoming adaptable and becoming a higher performer requires us to step outside our little box of comfort zone, to go into these areas. There's all sorts of magic that can happen outside these areas. Uh, But what holds us back are these unknown red areas, these unknown dangers, and we don't want to go down that path. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, do an assessment. Where are you? How comfortable are you out there in the unknown, looking at things that require foresight, vision, insight, versus are you only comfortable down in the known area? So be aware of where you are and try and expand your mind. Learning is about opening your mind, not filling it. So we're trying to expand our mind into areas where we have limited capabilities. And if we look at this, the way to really generate your capabilities across a range of areas is through engaging in collaborative projects. To truly learn to collaborate means to collaborate. You can't learn it from a book. You've got to do it and then reflect on it and go back over, well, what did we do well? What could we do better? What will we do different next time? So that understanding of what we do so what the implications of it and then the now what how do we move ahead together and if you look at knowledge succession it will take you through how to start those provocative conversations so that you build trust and relationships work through a project so that you come out the other end a more capable individual a more capable team and contributing to a more capable organization This requires us to lead inclusive environments that actually stimulate the co-creation of new knowledge. After we've done that, after we've invested in such a project, we don't just want to do a shallow after-action review or a basic lessons learned. We want to reflect quite deeply on what's worked and what hasn't. And if you just do a basic reflection, you'll learn some rules about maybe what you could have done better. But if you take that to a deeper level, you challenge the assumptions, you think about what you didn't know at the time, you'll develop deeper insights as to how to do better next time. And that will take you from doing things right to doing the right things. But if you invest further again, you get down to the real context and principles of who you're working with and why. And this is the kind of depth of reflection that you need, because then you're actually exploring what the right things to do are, with whom and why you do them and what value that they create. Once you've done all of this, you've done your project, you've thought about what you want to become, you thought about where you want to go, you can then actually write a personal development plan. Put something together. This is just a basic example. Sometimes people have a personal development plan in their head, but they forget it. Some people have a few bullet points written in a diary. Others do a complete reflective diary on a daily basis, but a strategic personal development plan is very powerful about what kind of goals that you want to commit to, and then what kind of activities you need to be doing over time and how you're monitoring that. Are you actually doing it or are you not? Work with a mentor or or a peer group so that you can gather comments on their understanding of how you're going. That feedback is extremely invaluable to your reflections and your journey of becoming adaptable. So if you truly want to be adaptable, you truly want to be a better leader, a better manager, a better person than you were before, then invest in these things, monitor them, do them, share them with others in order to become what you want to be. There's nothing wrong with what you are now, of course. This is not remedial. This is taking the great person that you are now 
and making it even better. Welcome to your journey of becoming adaptable. Thank you.